Countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, X minus one, fire. From the far horizons of the unknown come tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future. Adventures in which you'll live in a million could be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company presents... X minus one... The Native Problem by Robert Sheckley. But first, hear this. Now, X minus one and tonight's story, The Native Problem. To begin with, my name is Edward Danton. I've always been a misfit. Oh, that's all right. I'm not sensitive about it. In fact, I've grown rather proud of it. I just don't fit in the modern 22nd century world. There was no place in all of New York City from Norfolk to Bangor where I felt at home. And it was the same in every other great city complex on Earth. In school, I flunked such elementary subjects as group acculturation, sibling fit, values, recognition, and folkways judgment. There was only one thing to do. As practically every misfit in the past century had done, I decided to migrate to deep space and find a place where I could call my soul my own. I told my best friend Al Trevor of my plan. Good night. You're really going it? That's right, Al. Just as far from the solar system as I can get. But why, man? You've played 12-handed bridge with me, Al. Uh, You know what a dope I am at mass dancing. I'm a misfit. I want to get away. And it's not like in the days when the ships used the old Mickelson Drive. With these new GM subspatial torque converters where we can travel in a matter of months what used to take them 30 or 40 years. Well, I hate to see you go. Uh, One more thing, Al. I'm going to give you my breeding certificate. Oh, now, Ed, we couldn't let you do that. You and Myrtle want two children, don't you? Well, we've always wanted to have two, but you must I won't need a breeding certificate where I'm going. As a matter of fact, I may even find it impossible to breed at all. Well, that could be rather frustrating, old man. Well, maybe after a while I'll find a girl pioneer. In the meantime, there's always sublimation. Mm, true, true. Uh, what substitute have you selected? Vegetable garden. Might as well be practical, you know. Might as well. Well, old man, good luck and thanks for that breeding certificate. <laughs> The next day, I took off for the stars on the government ship. The spot I picked was out in what they call the New Territories. The planet I finally settled for was ideal. A calm, watery place dotted with fertile islands, blessed with a mild, uniform climate, and absolutely uninhabited. When they left me there, I took formal possession and christened the place New Tahiti for obvious reasons. At first, it was fine. I was busy exploring, growing vegetables, and building a shelter. After that, though, time began to drag. I had to do something. But what? I was marooned on this deserted planet, and it might be years before another Earth ship would land here. And then, miraculously, it happened. A ship came out of the skies and headed for a landing on my own private island. It was an ancient Mickelson drive job, battered and scored, but bearing a proud legend painted on its nose. The Hutter people, it read. When the ship landed on the beach... I ran out to meet it, forgetting that I must have looked more like a naked savage than a fellow Earthman. Hey! Hey! Hey, they're in the ship! Stop where you are! Welcome to New Tahiti. Boy, am I glad to see you folks. What's the latest news from... Stand back there. Take another step and I'll shoot. What, is something wrong? What's your name? Edward Danton. What's yours? Simeon Smith, military commander of the Hutter people. 
And this is Jedekiah Franker, my second in command. How come you speak English, boy? Me? Why, I've always spoken English. Where are the others? Where are they hiding? There aren't any others. Just me. I see. Father, can't we come out now? No, get back in the ship, Anita. Well, then I'll watch from here. Say, she's pretty. Your daughter? Huh. What do you think, Simeon? It's what I expected. Ingratiating, fawning, undoubtedly treacherous. Yeah. His people won't show themselves, you notice? Uh -huh. Probably waiting in ambush. I think an object lesson is in order. Right. Put the fear of civilization into them. Hey, don't point that gun at me. Father, no, he hasn't done anything yet. This way the others will know we mean business. It isn't right. Let him have it, Jedekiah. No, wait! Wait! Hey! He's running for the woods. Shoot him, Jedekiah. Okay. Shoot him. We've got to teach these savages who's boss. You're listening to The Native Problem. Tonight's attraction on X-1. Friends, for as many years as any of us can remember, the sadness that polio has brought to so many homes has been almost unparalleled. But a greater sadness than this lies ahead for any who may from now on catch polio. Because it may be due to carelessness. Vaccination against polio, the well-known sock shots, is more than 75% effective. And it's due to such vaccination that there was a drop of 47% in polio cases last year. But this year... Vaccination has been lagging. There are 108 million persons under 40, and of these, only 45 million have had as much as one shot of the vaccine. And please remember that while the first and second shots are helpful, the third shot is necessary for maximum protection. Now, there's plenty of vaccine, and the doctors are anxious to cooperate. Remember, the end of polio is at hand, but it takes three visits to the doctor to lick it. Can you afford not to go? Now, back to X-1 and the native problem. I was just plain lucky to get back to the friendly cover of the forest without stopping a bullet. It was obvious these people were too jumpy just then to listen to reason and believe me when I told them that I was not a native, that I was all alone here. I decided to wait a while. About dusk, I crept through the woods to get as near their ship as I could without being seen. They had come out of their ship. There were several dozen men and women and a few children. They were grouped around a campfire eating. On the edges of the group were several armed men looking toward the woods with apprehension. I watched while their leader, Simeon, stepped into the circle of firelight to address them. I could hear everything he said plainly. Friends, we have come at last to our long-awaited home, our promised land. Behold, a land of milk and honey, a place of bounty and abundance. Was it not worth the long voyage, the constant peril, the endless search? Yes, yes brother. It was. However, there is an aboriginal people here, naked and savage, undoubtedly cunning, ruthless and amoral, as aboriginals always are. Of these, we must beware. We will live in peace with them if they will let us. No one can tell what goes on in a savage heart. Their standards are not ours. Their morals are not ours. We cannot trust them. We must be forever on guard. And if in doubt, we must shoot first. Remember, land too. This was not going to be easy. I decided not to try another approach that night. The next morning, as they were bustling about unloading their spaceship, I walked down to the beach and headed straight for them with my hands held out to show them that they were empty. A sentry stopped me at the point of a gun, and in a minute, both Simeon and Jedekiah came running up, covering me with their weapons. I stood still, my flesh creeping in anticipation of the bullet someone might fire at me any minute. So you have come back. I'd like to explain. I am the leader of these people. I am the big chief, fella. 
You, big fella chief, your people? There's no need to talk that way. I told you yesterday. I have no people. There's just me. I speak English. Unless you're honest with me, you're going to regret it. Now, where's your tribe? I'm an earth man. Are you deaf? Can't you tell by the way I talk? Now, listen, you... Excuse me, uh, Simeon. I uh, don't believe I have met your friend. Professor Baker, this savage here claims to be an earth man. Oh? You are an earth man? That's right. My name is Edward Danton. Only a few months ago, I left Earth on a spaceship. How was it powered? By a GM subspatial torque converter. What do you think, Professor? It's amazing. Truly amazing. His grasp of colloquial English bespeaks a fairly high level of intelligence, which points up a phenomenon frequently met with in savage societies, namely an unusually well-developed power of mimicry. Our friend Danta as his original uncorrupted name must have been, will probably be able to tell us many tribal legends and myths. Oh, come off it, Professor. I'm an Earthman. No, no, my poor friend, you are not. Obviously, you have met an Earthman. Some trader, I dare say, uh, stopping for repairs. We saw signs that a spaceship once landed here, Professor. Oh, <laughs> confirmation to my hypothesis. That was the government ship that dropped me off here. It is interesting to note how his almost plausible story lapses into myth at various crucial points. He claims this ship was powered by a GM subspatial torque converter. Now, this is a nonsense syllabification, since the only deep space drive is the Mickelson. He also claims that a journey from Earth was made in a matter of months, since his untutored mind cannot conceive of a journey lasting for years... If we know that uh, no space drive, even theoretically, can reach here from Earth in less than 30 or 40 years. Then GM must have been developed after you left Earth. How long have you been gone? The hover ship left Earth 120 years ago. We are mostly fourth and fifth generation. Now, come on, Danta. Where's your tribe? Why are they hiding? This is preposterous. What can I do to convince you I'm from Earth? That's enough. We won't stand for back talk from natives. Where are your people? There's only me. Maybe a taste of the black snake whip will loosen his tongue. Later, Jedekiah. His tribe will come around for handouts. Natives always do. Then let's put him to work. Danta, you can join that work gang over there unloading supplies. No, thanks. I'll go back. <coughs> Chief said no back talk. <laughs> Why are you natives always so bone lazy? You'll be paid as soon as we unload the beads and calico. Now get to work. <laughs> could I do? I joined the work gang and unloaded the ship. By the late afternoon, we had finished. I sneaked off to sit beside a mountain spring near the ship. In a few minutes, Anita, the pretty girl I had noticed the day before, came and sat beside me. Hello, Danda. Oh. Anita, do you think I'm a native? What else can I think? Everyone knows how fast a spaceship can travel. Times have changed since your people left her. By the way, they weren't in space all that time, were they? No, they originally settled on a planet called Land 2. But there was a native rebellion. He barely managed to escape. In that case, I can understand why they're so nervous about aboriginals. Oh, but don't worry, Dada. Things will be better when the council takes over. Who are they? A council of elders. They're men of goodwill who, who detest violence. And if you and your people are really peaceable... I haven't any people. Yes, I know. But if you and your people are really peaceable, you're sure to prosper under the rule of the elders. It was no use. I couldn't even convince her. But as we sat together and talked, I began to forget my problems. I was enchanted by her. And I think she liked me, too. After a while, as though it were the most natural thing in the world, she was in my arms, and I was kissing her. What's going on here? Oh, you're the Kaya. You. You're a disgrace to your people. Are you out of your mind, girl? You can't mess around with a dirty native and keep your self-respect. Oh, just a minute, you. Shut up. As for you, you've got to learn something and learn it good. Natives don't fool around with hotter women. I'm going to impress that little lesson on you right here and now. Hey, Kaya, don't! I've had enough from you. Martha, you struck him. Well, he tried to hit me first. Get up, Jedekiah. You're not hurt. Oh, oh my jaw. Oh. Help! Help! The natives are revolting! Help! <laughs> 
Well, that did it. People began to shout and run all over the place. Anita tried to calm them down, but it was no use. I took to the brush just before they turned a machine gun on me. And all that night I hid while armed parties went crashing through the woods, shouting and firing at shadows. It was a nightmare. There goes one. Quick. They're behind us. Turn the machine gun. Got him. No. They got away. Look. Look there in the trees. Fire, man. Fire. Fire. like that all night long. By morning, I was exhausted, and so were they. I hid in the jungle and waited. I don't know what for. And then, along about the middle of the day, I saw Anita. I thought she was alone at first, and I knew she was looking for me. I stepped out in the trail in front of her. <gasps> oh. It's you, Denton. Anita, I... There are men back there. It's all right. They won't harm you. They came to guard me. Denton, are you all right? Guard you from me? They don't know you as I do. At the council meeting today, I told him the truth. You did? I told him the fight wasn't your fault. I told him you were only defending yourself. And Jedekiah lied. No pack of natives attacked him. It was only you. And I told him this. At last. Did they believe you? Oh, yes. I explained that the native attack came later. Native attack? Now, look, there wasn't any attack, Anita. There couldn't be. There aren't any natives. I could tell right then it was no use trying to convince anyone, even the girl I loved. It was then that I decided on a desperate plan. I sent Anita back to her people and waited for a time just to make them nervous. Then the next morning, I came striding into the middle of the Hutter camp. Oh, one step more and I'll kill you. I want to see Simeon. All right, Jedekiah, I'll take over. Here I am, Danta. Shall I shoot him, Simeon? No, let him speak. Go on, Danta. What is it? I have come here to bring you a declaration of war. What? I'll kill him now. What is it? What happened? Oh, Danta, what is it? It's war. But I begged with you to bring peace to your people. They wouldn't listen. It's war. All the tribes are gathering from every outlying island. How, how many are there? Many thousands. Fifty or sixty. We will fight to the death. Uh, Danta, wait. Uh, surely we can reach an agreement to... Uh... Why shed all this blood? There is a way. I thought so. Uh, what do you want? Equal rights. Yes, yes. What else? Well, that is all. Except, naturally, an alliance between the ruling clan of the Hutters and the ruling clan of New Tahiti. In short, a marriage. Never. We'll fight, even though we're wiped out. We can't. We wouldn't have a chance. Except, Father. Except before it's too late. How can I accept? Where could I find a Hutter woman who would sacrifice herself for a marriage like that? Why don't you ask me? And so it came about. Anita and I were married and were very happy. The Hutters, too, prospered in their new land. And soon they began to build up a thriving new civilization. Anita and I and our family moved to one of the more remote islands, where we weren't so much in the thick of things. Sometimes people would come to see us and ask me to talk about my people, and I would tell them how they could not stand the white man's civilization and how they died off, all but me. It always made them feel very guilty, and somehow I liked to watch them squirm. As I said, I've always been a misfit. X minus one has brought you the native problem. We pause now for station identification.